here at ASCO this year, we've heard recent data, and it was fun because before we walked in here to do this filming, we were having quite an animated discussion, huh. which I'm hoping we can replicate and we didn't lose all the fun, um, about some data uh, we saw here on a regimen called FLOT and how we use that and, and what is this, does this change our treatment paradigm um, for patients with esophageal, GE junctional, and gastric cancer. And as we've heard, there are very different diseases, so what is our treatment paradigm? And we've also heard, and I'm so glad we have this like UN uh, <laughs> board here, um, that, that probably across, depending on what part of the world you're in, you may also get different treatment in general. So this is a study which is conducted in Germany and is, uh, you know, involved many centers, but it's done in one, one country. So uh, the, parop as mentioned already said, paraptic chemotherapy has become uh, one of the uh, standard treatment options for patients who have uh, localized gastric cancer or locally advanced gastric cancer. Uh, and uh, one of the uh, 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 main data that drive to that recommendation is from the original magic study where we give three cycles of ECF, uh, epirubicin, cisplatin and 5-FU uh, before surgery and then three cycles afterwards. Uh, and uh, with the introduction of capecitabine, I think m many uh, clinicians actually are quite comfortable swapping the 5-FU with the capecitabine. So in this uh, FLOT4 study, which is reported by Dr. Abatran at, at ASCO this year, they've actually done a very large uh, uh, randomized phase 3 uh, trial where they actually compare uh, what would be deemed as standard, i.e. three cycles of ECF or ECX before and after surgery, versus FLOT, which is again given uh, for, uh, which is given as a two weekly cycle uh, for four cycles uh, before and after. So FLOT have got 5-FU, Lugovorin, uh, Oxaloplatin, and Doxitaxel. Uh, and the 5-FU is given over 24 hours. Uh, and uh, it is a regimen that has been developed in Germany for a while, so I think the, uh, the clinicians, the oncologists are used to uh, using that regimen. Uh, and in that study, they actually have shown a significant improvement, uh, most important in overall survival, uh, but also in uh, uh, relapse-free survival. Uh, and um, there is some difference in toxicity and I think that is something that we probably need to come on to discuss, uh, whether this is a regimen that uh, um, you know, patients in other countries uh, would be able to tolerate in a similar fashion as, as uh, we have seen in this German study. Um, uh, but certainly in, uh, in all the efficacy uh, 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 outcome, it was all in favor of FLOT. Uh, even pathologically, uh, there is certainly a significant uh, down staging compared to uh, the ECX uh, regimen. So this is like fulfirinox for locally advanced gastric cancer. With, with taxateer with instead of, <laughs> instead yeah, exactly. of RNP. Right. So it is exactly. something that I think when we take, when, when we, uh, at, well, I mean, certainly this is a, a practice changing study. So yeah. I think uh, many uh, clinicians and in many countries will look at this data uh, and think about whether this is something we can implement in our practice. Uh, but as I said, that most, I would have thought that most clinicians outside Germany would not have used that regimen. And especially in a perioperative setting where you, you don't really want to compromise your patients to then undergo surgery. I think it's something that we, we are now need to go on a very sharp learning curve yeah. uh, to make sure that we can deliver this treatment safely to and, our patients. And so just to set the stage a little bit, you know, this, this study included esophageal, gastroesophageal, and gastric cancers all of whom could potentially have different treatment choices. Also, like in the US, we use radiation a lot for the esophageal and GE junctional, and even possibly gastric cancers. We've seen in previous studies that when you include um, when you include radiation therapy in your adjuvant treatment for gastric cancer, if you try to intensify the chemo part of the regimen, it really doesn't make any difference. So now we're left with a little bit of a conundrum. So Manish, New York, the <laughs> epicenter of, of gastric cancer, radiation, what, what do you do right. now with this data? Well, so first let me say, you know, kudos to Dr. Albatron and his colleagues. It was a very important study, well done, 
um, randomized phase three. It took a long time, and and the results I think are meaningful. Um, and I think, as was said by uh, Dr. Chow, um, and and by yourself, I mean th there are different disease subtypes, and I think we should be careful when we kind of lump everything together and apply the same regimen to everybody. Um, the disease burden may be different, the underlying sort of comorbidities may be different, and that may play a role in how patients benefit from treatment. Um, so that was a long way of not answering your question, <laughs> <laughs> but no. Um, I so, and, and actually, the, the other part of this is that the the FLOT regimen, 5-FU, oxaliplatin, and docetaxel, is actually built from the DCF regimen that was developed, you know, 10 years ago. Actually, it was published in 2007. Don't and, date us. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, and th there have been modifications to that regimen to make it more toxic. And so the FLOT regimen really is a modification of that regimen. And so we have evidence in, in the metastatic setting that a three-drug regimen like FLOT or DCF is active. And, and um, you know, I think, again, kudos to the idea that we should test it in a perioperative setting. Um, one of the key drivers of the development of this regimen was that uh, Dr. Alpatron and colleagues were seeing a number of complete responses. So as Ian mentioned, um, there was downstaging, but I think, you know, for me, even more importantly, it was actually they, they did plot and then they did surgery and no tumor was seen on the pathologic specimen. It's actually reported at 20%, and many people in the United States think that's very high, but that's similar to what a radiation-based regimen would get for adenocarcinoma. For squamous cell, it's a little bit different. Um, so I think that needs to play a role in the decision-making as well. I, um, ultimately, though, I agree with Ian that um, in a perioperative setting where patients are curative, we don't want to do any harm. We need to, we need to have comfort with using the FLOT regimen. Um, but I do think that actually the data are compelling, and I think more and more people will be using it for this indication.